What's going on guys? Stefan here with you, s &E's Garage. Today we're going to be taking care of some transmission woes with our 2010 Wrangler Unlimited. <laughs> So if you guys remember from our last video, we have a pretty substantial transmission leak up front. And uh, we actually got under here and we came just to inspect these metal lines. Uh, because at first they looked a little bit crusty, but I, and a further inspection, most of it is oil and it all wiped off. So all of the metal on these lines are okay. It's this little rubber portion up here on uh, the two hoses that go up towards the cooler um, that are my culprit for the leak. Now originally, I was just gonna replace the whole line. You'll see I have it back here. Um, but after trying to get this front disconnect here off and failing miserably, you'll see here's the metal clip. It was completely seized in there. Um, I decided maybe we need to just try to replace the rubber section and if we're going to do that we're going to go ahead and install this Hayden rapid cool transmission cooler um, in series with the original cooler just to help cool this transmission down a little bit more because we are going to be using this off-road uh, we are going to be towing some jet skis with it and uh, we want to try to make this thing last as long as possible and with that being said i thought to myself well if i'm going to have the lines disconnected um i may as well get some transmission fluid and we'll in essence do a transmission flush uh we'll put some some hoses on the end of the cooler lines start the jeep let it pump some fluid out put some in and we're, we'll keep doing that until we get some clear fluid um so this is probably going to be a couple day project um we're going to go in the garage really quick, and I just want to show you exactly how you can disconnect these quick disconnects. Um, because it might be easier if you take your cooler out to do this. Uh, but we're going to try to leave, or take your lines out rather, but we're going to try to leave them in. Uh, I just purchased these so I can show you guys exactly what you need to do. So there are two ways that you can disconnect, or, or basically release this spring clip here. Uh, first and foremost is going to be this quick disconnect tool. I'll link this down in the description below. Basically you would clamp this over the line and install it here. And what it's going to do is you'll kind of feel it drop in to place like so. And when it does you twist and when you twist you're going to see these springs. You see how they just popped out? When they pop out like that that's when you're released and then if you twist back and pull they go back into place so that's one way you can do it is with this quick disconnect tool the other way to do it here is just with a pick and you basically you get in here with a pick try to get under it like this and you just pop it out and then the whole clip will come out pull your hose out and then when you're done you put it back together um, so we're actually going to reuse this clip. I need to use this on the one that broke um, when I was trying to remove it on the cooler. And uh, so I'm going to go put this in there. And then we're going to get under the Jeep. We're going to cut those fittings that the old, you know, where the old rubber line is. And then we're going to replace it with new rubber line. All right, guys. So what we're going to work on doing here is cutting these collars here. Uh, we're basically going to use a pair of dykes. And uh, we're going to cut them away slowly but surely. And then we're going to remove the hoses and replace it with new rubber hoses. Now to install our auxiliary cooler, we're going to tap in to the top hose. That top hose is the return to the transmission from the OEM cooler. Uh, so we're going to cut that one down the middle once we get to that point. And we're going to run two lines up to the front of the truck in order to... Um, install that cooler. Now that is also going to be how we're going to flush the transmission. I'll show you how we're going to do that when we get to that point, but we're basically going to run it and we're going to let the transmission itself pump its old fluid out into the bucket. Then we're going to put more in it and so on and so forth until we start seeing uh, some nice bright red fluid coming out. So let me go ahead Again, just going to use a pair of dykes. If I have to break out the whiz wheel, I will, but I don't think I'm going to need to. I think I'll just snip right through this. 
uh, we'll just replace the lower line and then when we get to the upper line we'll figure out the, the cooler. Alright guys, so with any luck, this is what you'll be left with once you get this collar off. It's going to go in the trash there. And what you'll end up seeing, number one, we ended up using a whiz wheel and ended up being a thousand times easier. Uh, but what you're going to see here is just a rubber line. So now we're going to do a head, go ahead and cut that, that one right here. And we're going to do the same exact thing. And we're going to get that line out, go over to our new line, cut one the exact size, and then we're going to double hose clamp it back together. All right, guys, you'll see we got that second one off. So now we're going to go ahead and remove this hose we're going to cut a new hose to length. All right guys, so here's our old rubber line here. Here's the new one. We double clamped it on each side. We're just gonna go ahead, slide it onto those two ends, tighten the clamps up, and then we're gonna move to the upper line. All right guys, so the clamps that I bought originally were too small, like literally a hair too small. So I had some bigger ones laying around. They're a hair too big, but they're wider. So I only have to run one clamp on each side. So now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna cut the same collars off of the hose above it, there and up there, but we're gonna get them from up top. So we're gonna cut them, do the same thing, and then we have to see if we have enough line to make our runs to the oil cooler. Um, if not, I'm gonna have to run to the store. All right guys, we went ahead, got this one off. That's going to be this top one right here. You'll see that one's gone. Now we're going to work on that one right above the one we clamped. Again, we're going to do the same thing. Cut it, pry it off. All right, guys, so we're here working on the top line. You'll see we just put a slit in it like that. All we did here is move our coolant reservoir out of the way. It slides right up um, into these little cams here. So that'll go right back in. But now we're going to work on getting that off. All right, guys. So we got this line off here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put some hoses on either side of this line and we're gonna run them to uh, buckets basically. And we're gonna start the Jeep up and we're gonna figure out which one of these is um, the pressure. It should be this guy right here that I'm looking at up top. This one should be the one that we want. So what we're gonna see is we're basically gonna pump you know, two or three quarts out at a time add some, pump some, add some, pump some, until we have nice fresh fluid in this trans. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead, take the grill off, and start figuring out how we're gonna mount our cooler. All right guys, so I started it and ran it for a second. This definitely looks like it's going to be our feed here. So let's start it up, let it run a little bit, and get some of that old trans fluid out. Here you'll see it. The transmission is pumping it out now. We'll let this run for a minute. Then we'll add some, repeat. Man, this fluid is dark. See, we have a little bit coming out of this line as well. But let's just let it do its thing here. And we'll shut it off and add some. All right, guys, so, so far we've ran almost a gallon through this thing. We're just over three quarts. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna keep doing this. I got one fresh gallon in, one old gallon out, and I got two more gallons to go. So let's uh, see what we can't come up with here. All right guys, so this is our second gallon that we put through here, and you'll see that it's starting to get a lot redder. Uh, so I think this is gonna be the last that we pump out. We're just gonna fill these two up, and then we have our third gallon back here in the trunk that uh, we are going to use to top the transmission off. And I think that'll be good for now and then we'll do this again in a couple thousand miles, put another gallon through it just to make sure it's good. All right guys, so we flushed about 12 quarts through this transmission. I got two full quarts out of it, or two full gallons out of it. Um, and then I pulled a half gallon out the second time um, I wanted to leave the level in the transmission on the higher side because I am going to be plumbing in an oil cooler and that is going to, you know, the transmission is going to have to fill that much more um, fluid by, you know, adding that cooler. We're going to need to add more fluid to the trans. So I left it a little bit on the high side. Um, so once we get the cooler in, 
we'll let the thing idle, warm it up, and we'll check the fluid. If it's still high, um, at that point, we'll go ahead, pop one of the hose clamps off again, and uh, drain a little bit more until we're where we want to be. Um, so I think we're going to call it a night for tonight. We might just go ahead and pull this grill so that we're a little bit ahead of the game. Um, but tomorrow we're going to go ahead and, and start figuring out exactly how uh, we are going to mount our tranny cooler. Alright guys, so what we have here is a Hayden 677 trans cooler. This is what it looks like. And then we have the Hayden 253 installation kit. It comes with the brackets and everything. They're bendable. It comes with screws to go ahead and install the brackets and everything. And then it comes with bolts and, you know, everything you need to, to route your hoses and everything. So I am going to leave a description for this or uh, a link for this stuff in the description down below. Uh, if you want to purchase from that link, it does help the channel out. I'll leave the trans fluid that we use too. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do now is get this cooler ready with these brackets. We're going to mock it up and uh, see what we can't figure out here and then once I get it to where I think uh, it's going to work the best um, I'll get back on camera and show you what we did. All right, so this is what we're looking at. What we went ahead and did is loosely installed these brackets on this cooler and right around here is where I think I want it in this area so we're going to go ahead and mark these with a, uh, a paint pen and then I'm going to drill some holes in there and we're going to put the self tapping screws in. Alright guys here we have our holes drilled uh, we started small and worked our way up, and we ended up at uh, 1360 fourths, so that should be a good size for this screw. Now we have our impact for our screw gun here. We're going to go ahead and get the cooler in. Uh, then we're going to tighten the bottom brackets on the cooler, and then we're going to fabricate exactly where we want our top brackets to go. And then we can run our lines to it. All right, guys, we got this right bracket here up top set up. All I did is I drilled another hole right there. So now we're going to do something similar on this side. I'll probably just move this harness out of the way and drill another hole, or I can utilize this hole if the screw, you know, if the hole's not too big. Uh, so let's see how we uh, make out here. All right, guys, we got our cooler completely mounted here, all four brackets. Like I showed you, we did our little 90 degree bends here, and then we went straight up to the top of the radiator support. I did end up drilling a new hole. These holes were a little too big for those uh, self tappers that they include with the kit, so we're good there. So now we're going to go ahead and run our lines. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to go out from the original OEM cooler. I'm going to go in the bottom and out the top. That way it gets the air out of the cooler better and it, it flows better. That's my idea. Uh, whether I'm right or wrong, I'm not sure, but that's the way I'm going to do it. All right, guys, we got our lower hose basically coming out of the original cooler right here. You'll see it going up and under the body of the truck up here. So now we're gonna run our top hose and that one is going to go to this open hose right there. And then we can put it all back together, put the grill back on and start it up. All right guys, both cooler lines are ran. I just wanna show you down here the way we did it. Let's get under the Jeep, I'll show you the way we routed it. We went right under this cross member here, up above the sway bar, and right up into the radiator area through here. So we're all set. Before we put the grill on, we're going to start the Jeep up, check for leaks. So the main reason that we're doing this is because between 35 and 45, this Jeep had a, a slight torque converter shutter that I felt um, on my test drive and I might have to put a trans in it, I'm not sure yet, but what we went ahead and did is flush the fluid. That will give uh, the torque converter, you know, fresh fluid to, to work with, and uh, it'll have, you know, a nice fresh additive packet to help that transmission shift better. Um, and we're also going to put a additive in by Dr. Tranny, um, instant torter, uh, torter, instant shutter repair, basically, see if it works. Um, I'm okay with putting a trans in this thing, but I'd like to at least get the summer out of it this year. Uh, that way, next winter, I can, you know, down it for the winter and take care of it then. Uh, but let's go ahead, let's button it up, start her up, make sure there's no leaks, and check it out. All right, guys, we have her running here. Like I said, we're just going to go ahead and check for leaks at our clamps here. We're going to take a look at our clamps down here. 
and it would appear that we have our leak fixed. So let's go ahead and let it run for a few minutes, let it warm up, then we'll check our trans fluid, add if necessary. Um, before I put the grill on, if I have to subtract, I can subtract from right here. So let's let it warm up. All right, guys, I just want to show you where we're at here. We've been letting it run. If that trans is still cold. It's only been running for about 20 minutes, and we are right at the second dot at the cold line. So we are going to call that good. Trans fluid is nice and clean. It's got nice fresh fluid in it. And it's got a nice new set of cooler lines and a nice auxiliary cooler. So hopefully this helps us push this thing over the edge and at least get a year or two out of it the way it sits. Um, and who knows, by the time it's ready for a trans, maybe we'll have bigger plans for this thing. But uh, if this video helped you, do your trans cooler lines, a trans flush, or and or install an auxiliary trans cooler, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and drop links to everything we used in this video uh, down in the description below. I'll put the trans cooler, I'll put the uh, the fluid that we used, and then I'll put some of the, the rubber line that we used as well. I believe it was 1130 seconds, but I'll, I'll add some of that. You know, that way if you want to buy any of that stuff, it's right there and ready for you. So, like I said, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.